Hey there everyone, welcome back to Game Vine, and my name is David, and today we're going to be taking a look at another Steve Jackson game with the Mars Attacks, a license attached to it. Now, if you've watched my other review of Mars Attacks, the dice game that is also by Steve Jackson Games, you already know that I like the Mars Attacks license and or the property. Um, I like the movie more than I do the Topps cards, and they went with the Topps cards um, with the art and the license for this game, which either way, I like Mars Attacks as a whole, so I'm actually okay with the art being the Topps cards over the movie when it comes to board game format. And the other Mars Attacks game got a low grade because the theme really didn't fit with it. It was a roll um, the dice once or twice, maybe three times, and put the dice on a card. Uh, when I think of Mars Attacks, I don't think of that type of game. But this game is a little different. It's a dexterity game where you only have one dice and the dice is just there as a randomizer. This is more of a flicking dexterity game with the dice being the object. And if you know me, I like dexterity games. So I like Mars Attacks, I like Dexterity Games, and this game is quoted to be about 10 minutes. That is up my alley as well. So on paper, this looks to be a winner. I don't know. Let me show you what's in the box and how this game plays. It's extremely simple too. That's, that's also a good thing. Uh, okay, let's get into the game. Okay, so what is inside this flimsy box? As you can see, mine came damaged, um, but I mean, what can you ask for? The other components inside the box are what matter, um, but I don't like this box at all. I'll get into that later. Uh, so you have the thick cardboard on everything here, and the planets consist of three rings. As you can see, the points go up. They are double-sided, and I'll get into why that is later. The other cardboard component that we have here are the four ships, so you can play up to four players. Uh, those are also double-sided. One ha has lights and one doesn't. And the final component, other than the rule book, which is an easy read, is the dice here. Custom dice. Really nice. It's a smaller dice, but again, this is just an object for you to flick. Okay, so those are the contents. Now let me show you the simple gameplay. Okay, before I get into the gameplay, um, as you can see, I put down the felt here. I don't normally do that for the reviews, but in this case, this dice would just go all over the place on a hard surface. So if you can, I recommend playing on a softer surface. So this is a setup for a four player game. You always do the number of planets plus one equal to the amount of players. So if I had three players, I would just take one planet out. So let me set up the theme here. Um, you're basically aliens trying to conquer these different planets and you have your dice here and you're in your ship and this is what you're doing. You're sending your ship to conquer those planets and strike. So you start your turn by doing that and you can hold your ship but I just say go ahead and do whatever feels natural and you can prod, flick or whatever you want to do but it has to completely leave your ship like that. If it doesn't and it hits the ship like that, I've seen it happen, you lose your turn. So it moved all the way over here. You simply take your ship, put it on top of the dice. That is where you now are. That is all you do on your turn. Other things to keep in mind are uh, different rules. Like if another player flicks and he lands on you at all, he puts his ship on top of the dice and you are knocked back to home base. Basically where you're sitting. That is where you'll always go and that is your home base. And you're trying to flick on these planets however you land on it. That is a legal land and this is a legal land. So once you land on one of these planets, you get to take the outermost ring and put it in your scoring pile. Okay, so you're basically trying to accumulate the most points to win the game. It's simple as that. Um, the end of the game is triggered when all the pieces have been obtained. So you have to get everything. And once another player gets on this one here, he will take the outermost ring. The one catch that we have, this is why the dice is included. Um, if you can see, the middle piece of every planet has a label. If the dice lands on it, with that label, you get to turn this over. As you can see, the back side here says bonus. This is now worth four points, so when you put it in your score pile, you put it up this face. So now that you know, you got an extra point. And each ring has that plus one. So every time you land on it with the appropriate face, you get bonus points. 
Also, when you land on a planet, you get sent back to base. So you get sent back to base if somebody lands on you and or when you claim a piece. And that's it, that is really it. Again, the game keeps going until all the planets have been obtained by every player, and then you count them up to see who wins. Now, let's see what I think about this game. Hopefully, it lived up to my dexterity and Mars Attacks expectations. So that was Mars Attacks 10 minute takedown. And as we always do on Game Vine, we give our board games grades and or percentage. Um, and I gave this one overall an 84%. I like this game. This is just outright fun. Um, now the theme is very veneer thin, um, but it's in the spirits of Mars Attacks, which is what I like. Um, it's kooky fun, dexterity really does mesh well with Mars Attacks. I love the art that they have on each planet. Now the backside, uh, the bonus is very plain. I don't know what they could have done with that, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, the art that they have on each one is very nice and very clean. So I appreciate that very much because the last Mars Attacks game was really lacking on the art. And the age for this game is 10 plus, which I think is absurd. This is a great family game. Alex plays this game and she's only six. Um, if you can flick the dice, then you can play this game. Um, I think it's just because of the theme um, but there is no really gory uh, things going on. Um, there are like guns and stuff. And there is little to no strategy in this game. You can go after the uh, bigger targets to gobble up those smaller coins or try to go for all the middle pieces, but it's close to the very end. And this dice really skips across the table, especially if it's on a hard surface. You can really be aiming at a planet here and you're so close to it and be all the way over here by the end of the turn and that's kind of the unpredictability of dexterity games but i'm okay with it because i mean it's just kooky fun and this game is so fast so botch moves won't really matter too much because i mean it's either a filler that you're playing or you're going to play it again afterwards yeah mentioning fillers this one is a great one for groups Say you're waiting for a um, seven player group night and only four of you happen to show up about 10 minutes early. Um, you bust this out, just put it out and lay it down. It takes about a minute to do so. And then once people get into it, they start having fun and the game goes quickly. And then when the other people show up, they'll either show up at the end of the game or in the middle and I mean, what, what is five minutes really? They'll be able to see the art of this game and how the game flows and become interested in it themselves. But this box is lame and I know everyone complains about it, but I'm gonna throw my two cents in too because I paid $10 for this. Again, the components are pretty nice. I like everything in the box, but this flap up top here, if they could have, I know that the box is thin, but if they could have just made it a top, it would have been much better. Um, and as you can see, it is damaged. It was mailed to me. Um, so even if I were to carry this, I, this doesn't take much to damage this box. So uh, that would be my biggest gripe about this game. But beyond that, it, it houses everything and it keeps it uh, together. So I'm gonna keep the box. I'm just saying. So the art is good. The components are good. The theme is thin, but it matches the game well. And the gameplay is just kooky fun. So this game got an 84, which is a B, and is a great grade for this game. I will be keeping this in my collection for a while. I just, again, it's a filler. I recommend this for families. I recommend this for dexterity game lovers. I recommend this for people who like Mars Attacks because this will get people into like a gateway dexterity game scene. So thank you so much for watching Game Vine today and the review of Mars Attacks 10 Minute Takedown by Steve Jackson Games. I appreciate every one of you fans out there watching and if you please could like and subscribe to the video and or our channel, I would appreciate that too. Until the next time that I see you, I have been Dave from Game Vine. Have a great rest of your day and a great time with all that you play. You heard it here on Game Vine. I'm out. Ha <laughs> ha!